If you speak to my friends, they tell you I'm an unlikely candidate to be someone urging others to have faith in humanity. I'm perhaps a bit too preoccupied with some of the disappointing behavior that we see around us. But there is one place, my workplace, that does cause me to have hope in the future generations. This is where I work. It's the NRU reactor at Canadian Nuclear Laboratories. It's a, a nuclear reactor used for science. Who knew that Canada's most productive science facility was tucked away in the forest, a short drive up the valley from our nation's capital? Well, two issues right away there. First, how can I make such a bold claim that NRU is the most productive science facility we've ever built in Canada? And second, perhaps more fundamentally, what does NRU stand for? <laughs> NRU is National Research Universal, an odd but an apt name for a facility that has made substantial contributions to every area of scientific endeavor, physics, chemistry, biology, engineering, but those of us who work there just call it NRU. As for its contributions to Canada and the world, NRU provided the knowledge that launched and sustained two multi-billion international industries for decades, one in the energy sector and the other in the health sector. It has directly impacted hundreds of millions of people's lives and enabled a new branch of science to come into existence which was recognized with a Nobel Prize. More about all of that in a minute. So how is a nuclear reactor used for science? What good does splitting atoms do? Well, I learned in high school that everything, even me, everything is made of atoms. And atoms are the fundamental building blocks. And there are 92 of those building blocks, and we give them different names, carbon, hydrogen, iron. And each atom has in its center a nucleus made of protons and neutrons and electrons spinning around the outside. And that's all the word nuclear means. It just means about the nucleus. Chemistry is sticking atoms together. You have two H's and an O, and you make an H2O. But nuclear science is concerned with what's inside the atom. A nuclear reactor, of course, is reliant on one atom uh, overall, and that is the heaviest one that you'll find in nature, uranium. And uranium has a special property. If you add a neutron to a uranium, it's too heavy. It cannot stay in that state. It wants to split apart, and th those two halves are other atoms, about half the size of a uranium atom, and out comes some energy and two or three neutrons. Well, if we needed a neutron to make the split, and now we've made two or three more, they can go on and make other uranium split, and on and on we'll go. There's only two other features needed, and then we've got everything we need to know to make a nuclear reactor. Uh, the first is that those neutrons are going too fast when they first come out, and they, they need to bounce into other lighter atoms to scrub off some speed, and hydrogen will be perfect. We know there's a lot of hydrogen in H2O, right? And the last thing, we need a material that will soak up neutrons when we want to stop the reaction. No neutrons, no more splits. And really... That's all that's in NRU. Although you saw it was a vast science facility, it's the size of a cathedral. At its heart, it's a simple machine. We have some uranium in long metal rods. Those are in a tank of water. And we have some other rods, made of cobalt in this case, and they soak up the neutrons when we want to stop the reactor. When the designers of NRU, back in the 50s, designed and brought the facility into operation in 1957. <clears throat> they didn't try to second guess what it would be used for. They wanted it to be a flexible, versatile machine so that people could imagine, dream up new types of experiments and use it to break frontiers. They didn't try to guess. It was built to be a universal science facility. 
NIU is full of holes. You don't think of nuclear reactors being full of holes, but NIU is, and that's because the designers wanted scientists to get access to the core and, and use it to do great things. And I'm always amazed when I hear the stories of innovation that have come out from NIU. And I have three of those stories that I think will really illustrate the point. The first thing that happened, I must say, I don't want to imply that innovation started just when NIU became available. There were other research reactors before that, and smart, inventive people used those as soon as they were available. But NIU is the pinnacle. It's the, a real culmination of all that's gone before. So when those early reactors and then NIU became available, one thought that came up in scientists' minds was, now we can make isotopes. An isotope is just a heavier version of an atom. In the nucleus of an atom, there's protons and neutrons. Neutrons don't do much. They just make an atom heavier. Add a neutron, heavier atom. And there are three atoms of hydrogen. They're all hydrogen. They're all different weights. So why did scientists want to make isotopes? We've got a big tank of water making trillions of neutrons in NIU. You can add neutrons to atoms and make isotopes. Why? Some isotopes are not happy in their state. They want to spit out some energy and settle to a more stable state. And that energy is an X-ray. And there were two really clever ideas emerging about how we could use an X-ray. And today, in NIU, we make some isotopes. And they shine a very low energy, a gentle X-ray. And they can be injected into patients. And the X-rays shining out of a patient can be used to make a diagnostic image, a CAT scan. And in a regular year, we can make enough for five million CAT scans, helping all those people and their families. We make other isotopes, like cobalt-60, that shines a very, very strong X-ray, and it will kill anything that it shines on. And back in the 50s, when this technology was first contemplated, here in Canada, engineers worked with medical professionals to design machines that shone that x-ray onto tumors in cancer patients to kill the cancerous tissue and treat cancer patients. And the first uh, cancer therapies were performed here in Canada in the 50s, and that technology was sold around the world. And today, the cobalt that we make in NIU every year treats 60 million can cancer patients in 80 countries. This is our 60th anniversary. I said we started in 1957. And we've done the math, and over its life, NRU has made um, well over, well over, half a billion patient treatments. Half a billion. There was another entirely different idea taking shape in some people's minds when NRU became available, and the reactors that preceded it. And that was, can you use the nuclear reaction to boil water, make steam, drive a turbine, turn a generator, and make electricity? The challenge with that technology is, in the center of the nuclear reactor, the conditions are very harsh, and they're not like anything you see anywhere on Earth. So how would you choose the right materials to build that structure? The investment in a nuclear power reactor, these machines are much, much bigger than an NRU or a research reactor. The investment is very big. It's rather like a hydro dam. It costs a huge amount of money to build. But once you've built it, it then just makes cheap, reliable, clean electricity for decades and decades. Unless you've chosen the wrong materials to make the reactor from. In which case, it doesn't last, and your investment is wasted. So in NRU, scientists can get a long stick and literally put... 25 samples of different bits of steel on the end and put that into the reactor and leave it there for a while and let them experience those harsh conditions, pull it out a year later, and then do experiments on those 25 steels. Which steel was the best? Which retained its strength? Which is the best candidate for building the big power reactors? And NRU, the knowledge gained from experiments there, has sustained Canada's nuclear industry over those decades. If you're a government trying to plan climate change goals, greenhouse gas reduction goals, and you have a domestic technology that makes a sixth of the country's electricity, well over half of Ontario's electricity, all with zero greenhouse gas, that's a huge boon. 
just because a few people answered some practical questions using the capabilities of NRU. So the uh, third story is about this guy, Bert Brockhaus. Bert was uh, a young man in World War II and worked as a sonar operator, and then in the 50s found himself at Chalk River Laboratories, where the earlier reactor was operating already, and NRU was coming into operation. And he dreamt up machines that could get neutrons shining out of holes. I said there was holes in the side of NRU direct those neutrons and shine them onto samples of material. And by measuring how the neutrons scattered from the sample, he was able to, to, to gain fundamental knowledge about how materials were knit together at the molecular level. An astounding technique. And here's the magic. It can be used on anything. With that technique, you can look at metals, polymers, glasses, ceramics, gels, semiconductors, anything. And so many of the innovations of the 20th and 21st century rely on advanced materials. Bert was recognized with a Nobel Prize in 1994, and by that time, he shared the prize with Cliff Schull from the USA. And by 94, uh, this technique, uh, these instruments, were installed in research reactors in every developed country because it is such a powerful technique for understanding materials and making new innovation. And it's those stories of innovation from history, but the ones I hear about me every week that I'm at work, that make me such a proud, so proud to be a member of the NIU team. And here are some of the members of that team. We, we run the facility 24-7, Christmas Day, New Year's, shifts. We can't ever all be in one photograph. But because we operate NIU today, Every day of the week, a PhD student, a professor, a researcher, a scientist comes through our front door with a new idea for an experiment to give Canada thousands of years of electricity from thorium fuel or develop the next generation of medical isotope products or develop a new material which, well, which will what? Enable a new type of heart implant or a supersonic train? or a faster computer, I don't know. But those first two examples are real. Thousands of years of electricity from thorium and the next generation of medical isotopes, those experiments have been in NIU this year. So we've proved that this works. Get a powerful, capable scientific tool and put it in the hands of imaginative scientists and great things will happen. As a country, we made an investment, a big investment to build NRU, but not out of proportion with the things governments spend money on, the same as a big city hospital or four or five fighter jets. And that investment has paid us back many times over. Half a billion patient treatments. Billions of tons of greenhouse gas avoided. NIU will end operation next year, in 2018, in the spring, and our 60 years will, will stand as, as a proud record of all that we've done. But I'm confident that the coming generation of scientists, those starting their careers today, will continue to astound us with new innovation as we put into their hands capable, powerful scientific tools like NIU. Thank you.